Good morning. Go and open your book to page 201. Today's lesson is about ratios. The word ratio is comparing, it is about comparing two, dip, uh, two things. So if you have like a comparing A to B, so ratio of A to B, you can write in a fractional form like A over B. So, fra so ratio is, is, like a, uh, is, is like a fraction. So that, let's go to uh, example one to see how this works. So example one, it says Marcy has saved $130. So let's write down all the information. So Marcy, $130. And Jen saved $170. Now when you're doing a ratio, make sure you pay close attention to the order of uh, what it asks for. So for A, it asks, find the ratio of Marcy to uh, Marcy's saving to Jen's saving. So Marcy to Jen. So make sure you follow the, the order correct, uh, closely. So Marcy is 130. Jen is 170. And if you reduce, you get 13 to 17. And that would be your answer. So this is the ratio of Marcy to Jen. Now, if you go to B, you're looking for ratio of Jen uh, to Marcy. So you're looking for Jen to Marcy. So in this case, this order gets switched. And so you get 17, so you reduce, so 17 to 13. So for ratio, make sure you pay close attention to the order. You have to follow exactly what it says. Now, if you notice that from the ratio, you're not going to know what original numbers are. Okay, so if I cover it up, you're not going to what, know what those things are. It can be 17 to 13. It can be 170 to 130. It can be 17 million to 13 million. Okay, so in order to go back to the original, in order to find the original numbers, you need to, have, you need to put in a multiplier. To the number that you need to multiply to get back to original. So in this case, your multiply is 10. So you need to multiply by 10 to get back to your original number. Okay. Now let's go over example two to see how to get, how to find the, the multiplier. So example two, it says two numbers in a ratio of three to five. So you got two numbers, they are three to five. And their sum, so you can, as soon as you, as soon as you have the ratio and you're looking for the original number, you need to put in a multiplier. So you make it into 3x to 5x. So x is the multiplier you need to multiply to, to get back to the original number. Okay, so first number is 3x, the so second number would be 5x. Now you read the next sentence, it says their sum, so their sum, sum means you add, right? So their sum means you're adding the first number and the second number. So the sum of the, of, of the two numbers is 32. So now you add this together, you get 8x, you go to 32, and divide by 8, divide by 8, so x equal to 4. Now don't box the answer, okay? Don't box this as your final answer, because this is only the multiplier. This is the multiplier that you need to multiply to get back to your original numbers. So make sure you read the question, okay? Make sure you read and answer the question correctly. It asks you for the two numbers. So the two numbers are, so first number is 3x, so it would be 12. Second number is 5x, so 5 times 4 would be 20. So make sure you use a comma because it asks for numbers. It does not ask for ratio. So do not use colon because this is a ratio. The question does not ask for ratio. So don't use colon. You have to use comma because it asks for two numbers. Okay, now let's go to example 3. Let's read a question. It says, the three sides of a triangle in a ratio of 2, 3, and 4. So just go into a triangle. And again, because 2, 3, and 4 are not the original numbers. Okay? They are just the ratio. So, to, so you need to put in the multiplier so to get to the original number. So this is 2x. Again, x is a number you need to multiply to get to the original number. So 3x, 4x. The next sentence says, 
the perimeter is 63. So P equals to 63. Okay. Per perim when you read the perimeter, right, you write down exactly what it says. So when it says perimeter, you write down P. When it says is, means equal. 63 means 63. So now you're looking for the length of the three sides. So what you need to do is you need to go and uh, substitute for the P. So perimeter is is sum of all three sides. So perimeter equal to this the this sign, so 2x plus this sign plus this sign. So now you can go and add, so you get 9x equal to 63 divided by 9, divided by 9, so x equal to 7. Again, do not box this. This is not a final answer. Okay, 7 is the multiplier. This is what you need to multiply to get your original number. So this size 2x so would be 14. This size 3x so would be 21. And this size 4x would be 28. Again, do not use colon because it asks for number. It's not asking for ratio. And next thing you have to do is you have to watch the label. Okay, the label is feet. So you need to you need to add feet, the the label. Okay, and that would be your answer. Okay, let's go to example four. Example 4, it says 66 hours of a student's week are spent in study, class, and in work. Okay, so, so study plus class plus work equal to 66 hours. It says the time spent in this activity are in the ratio of 4, 2, and 5. So ratio of 4, 2, and 5. That means, so again, the ratio of 4, 2, and and 5. So that means this is 4x because again 4 to 5 you don't know what the real numbers are, what the original numbers are. These are the reduced ratio. So you need to put in a multiplier to get back to its original number. So 2x and this would be 5x equal to 66. So you add all this together you got 11x equal to 66 divided by 11 divided by 11 so x equal to 6. So this is the multiplier. This is what you need to multiply to get back to the original number. So they ask you to find the number of hours in each activity. So study is 4x. So study equal to 24 hours. Class is 2x. So class equal to 2x is 12 hours. And work is 5x. So work equal to 30 hours and that's it okay let's go to example five let's go and read the, the poem it says the length and width of the rectangle are in a ratio of seven to five again when you read as soon as you see the word rectangle you need to go and draw your rectangle and they both length width length width so they put all four sides and then next part it says they are in ratio of 7 to 5. So length to width is 7 to 5. So this would be 7x, 5x, right? 7 to 5. And they both all four sides. So the length and width are in ratio of 7 to 5. Again, you need to point a multiplier. Whenever you deal with ratio, you need to point a multiplier. The purpose of multiplier is so you can multiply to get to the original number. Now let's go to the next part. It says the perimeter, so P, so per perimeter is to be greater than 72. Now when, whenever you have the inequality, you have to pay close attention. Make sure that, that you do not uh, change into equal. Okay? So make sure that you keep following through. So whenever you deal with inequality, you need to have inequality and stay with it. Do not go all over the place. So perimeter is this side, this, so you have to add all four sides for perimeter, right? So, so the top is 7x, the right side is 5x, the bottom is 7x, and the left side is 5x. And make sure you follow through with your inequality, 
So let's go and add all this together. So you got 24x is greater than 72. Divide by 24, divide by 24. So x is greater than uh, 3. Now do not box that. So you need to go and find out the length. So let's start with, so let's go and do the length. For the length, so you, you start with x greater than 3. Now to get to the length, again, you have to stay with the inequality. So length is 7x. So, need to, so to get to length, you, to, get, to go from here to here, you need to multiply by 7. So this is for length. So multiply by 7, so you get 7x is greater than 21. And that's 7x, so you have to do a reverse substitution. So 7x is the L. So L is greater than 21 and doesn't have a label. Okay. And do the width. So width, again, start with the inequality. You got to start with the inequality. So to get from here to here, you need to multiply by 5. So you get 5x is greater than 15, and then you, you need to go ahead and change into w greater than 15, and that's it. So remember, once you get a multiply, you have to stay with it and, and continue from there. So again, for length, you start with inequality, and to get there, you need to multiply uh, by the 7 and to get to the length. So make sure you do this part. Don't just box this. Another thing you have to be careful with with, with the physical object is that um, like the real object cannot have a negative numbers. So that's one thing you have to watch. So just remember that. Okay, let's, uh, let's, go to the, let's go to page 205. The next one is the rate. Ratio, usually ratio is used to compare things that are the same. Rates usually used to compare things that are different. And so when, when you have like a speed, like miles per hour, miles per hour. So actually what you're measuring is that you're comparing mile, miles to hour. Okay, so that's what that is. So you can, again, so it's, it's, it's similar to the ratio. Again, ratio, you should compare the same thing. Rates, you should compare different things. Now that, let's go over, that, let's go to example eight. Example eight, it says, Mrs. Norton, Mrs. Norton's car used a gas in a rate of 16 miles per gallon. So what you want to do, you want to write it in the ratio form. So 16 miles to one gallon. So 16 miles per hour, uh, 16 miles per gallon is 16 miles to one gallon. The next, what you want to do is the reason you want to put in your label so you can none up your labels. So next part says how many gallons of gasoline? So how many gallon of gasoline will she need in order to drive 464 miles? So 464 miles. So when you deal with race, it's very simple. You line up, line up your label, and whatever you see over here, that is your equation. So your equation would be 16 over 464 equal to 1 over x. Right? You just Make, into, make this into fraction, make this into fraction, and put equal. That's what you have to do. Now to solve this, you cross, multi, cross multiply. So you got 16x equal to 464. Then you divide by 16, divide by 16. So x will equal to 29 gallons of gas. So again, whenever you deal with, with rates, go and write it in the ratio form and Line up your label, and once you once you line it up, then whatever you see, that's your equation. So, so from here you get this this fraction. This would be equal, and this you get this fraction. 
And after that, once you get your equation to solve, you just cross multiply. So get that and you divide and you can go and solve. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's go and do some practice.